Pleased to be joined out here on the SB Nation NFL show by the one and only. You know her. You see her everywhere around the entire globe, around multiple universes. I would reckon it is Aaron oh. Andrews. Aaron, thank you for joining us during Super Bowl week. Thank you so much. Is that like the meta universe? All these things people are trying to tell me about. Now you have to buy like lives and houses and property and all these other universes. You know, that's not my forte. Uh, but me neither. Does, yeah, it does <laughs> exist, I think, um, or exists in some realm. Um, but uh, but that's that's a matter. You know, we are kind of in the metaverse uh, corresponding over Zoom, I, I guess. So maybe we're a part yeah. of it. We're, we're in the matrix, uh, really is what it is. Uh, at least that's we what are. all... All the commercials this NFL season told me, Aaron, I wanted to start this off with a question that I hope you've never gotten. You get interviewed a lot and you do a lot of interviews, but I wanted to give you a first Point. one that I, I really, I think you've never gotten before. Here we go. What is your favorite letter of the alphabet and why? Oh, that's really good. That's right. Yeah. No big deal. Yeah. I'm going to say H. Why? For Howie, my dog, Howard. See, my name is RJ, so I look at life through the prism of, you know, acronyms a lot. Uh, your life revolves oh. around acronyms, NFL, Fox. I get Fox is a word, but still, you know, looks like an acronym. Um, sure, EA, EA is a really, like, powerful set of initials. Like, those are Where? strong. Where? Yep. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, and, and your your initials work really well for a lot of things, like for wear your clothing line. Yeah. I mean, like, my initials yeah. don't work that way. Yours, you've got really malleable initials to work with in life. I have both of your initials in my full name, so I disagree with you. Aaron Jill, R, R, yeah. Come on now, RJ. Okay, yeah, well, hey, you're making me feel better about myself, respect. Yeah. Um, Aaron, it is Super Bowl week in Los Angeles. Are you excited to not be working? Are, are you enjoying this process of it? Do you wish it were on Fox? I mean, obviously, you know, speak for your company, but you know, how, how are you feeling this week? I wish every Super Bowl was on Fox. It's hard to sit back and watch somebody else do the game. Um, I end up usually texting Joe and Troy during the game and just saying, what do you think? It's hard to do. It's hard to sit and watch somebody else do the game because I want to hear what Joe and Troy have to say. I miss the chatter in the breaks. I miss them. What I, you know, if a challenge flag is thrown. What, Troy, what did you think of that? If, if a call, you know, was made against a team, I want to text Pereira. Pereira, what do you think of that? I miss our group. I miss our producers. Our, I miss our directors because I like how we do it. Nothing against the other networks. It's just, you know, it's familiar. It's it's my family. So, yeah. Yeah, we were talking right before we started recording. I cover the Cowboys for SB Nation. So, like, you guys are kind of our crew. Like, we we feel a sense yeah. of ownership with <laughs> yeah. you guys. You know, like, you know, we're, we're more accustomed to you guys. Actually, we get a little jealous. Like, you did guys you miss us for that wild card game? Because I know a certain announcer that made a joke about it. Yeah, we did. And what's more is we were really bitter. You were doing an Eagles game, of all things, uh, that particular day. I blame the loss on you guys, uh, really, for not being in Dallas. It was, it was I, cool and nostalgic to be on CBS, but, like, for Cowboys Niners, of all things, it just it felt really, really unnatural uh, for, for, you know, for all of you, but for Troy to not be there. You know, it just it would have been cool. <laughs> I, I really uh, was bummed out about that. What What is this yeah. week like for you when you are doing the Super Bowl? Uh, what, what are you doing on we're speaking on Wednesday on the Wednesday of Super Bowl week uh, if you're getting ready for the game? I'm assuming we would probably be at somebody's practice. Uh, maybe that was Thursday, Friday. Actually, that's probably what it is. Um, you know what? We're probably doing things like this, but then it all kind of gets shut down on Thursday, Friday. Um, you know, we have such a responsibility to the broadcast. You, It was interesting. I was listening to Al Michaels um, do Pat McAfee, and he was talking a little bit about is his prep different? And you like to say that it's not, but how could it not be? It's a Super Bowl. You want to make sure everything's covered, even if, you know, it was the LA Rams who we've had is so much to end the season. So I feel pretty good on them, but it would be difficult because we haven't really covered the Bengals. We had them once last year. I think it was week three, maybe on week Thursday two. night, right? Yeah, on Thursday night against the Jags. So uh, things have changed for them, you know, the way their season went, you have to go back and, but yeah, so that's kind of it. By Wednesday, it, we'd be like locking it down. My husband would be out to all the parties and I would be like, come home, leave me alone. I'm studying. Sure. Uh, on that subject, you mentioned Al Michaels. I read on Tuesday night that this particular NBC broadcast has not had a Bengals game this year, which is really interesting. Um, oh, and th yeah. That's unique. Obviously, that would never happen for you guys because you, you would have the NFC title game. But could you imagine like how weird would that be weird to, to have the, a team in the Super Bowl that you didn't work at least one time throughout the season that I imagine that would be just a unique challenge? Yeah, that would be really hard. And, and you know, that 
does happen to us that we usually have last year we had at kansas city we only saw them once or not last year the year we had the super bowl for 49ers kansas mm -hmm. city um, actually that was the game the w one game we had of the chiefs was the game that patrick injured his knee where like his knee came out of the pocket for our game on a thursday night against the broncos so yeah that usually does happen to us though with an afc team especially um well we had we did have the patriots we ended up having them one time so yeah it we usually have the afc just once sure and you guys are special now because you've had a lot of thursday night games you get to you know like you mentioned you get Bengals, jags like that wouldn't really happen on fox i mean generally yeah. speaking yeah. um so that is unique i love stuff yeah. like this like nfl broadcasting i know you are a fan of melissa stark and so i know yeah. what you're working on with crown i imagine has something you know to do with your admiration certainly for melissa stark but for many women what are you working on with crown right now yeah, no, I, well, this was a, this is a crown royal initiative and I'm so grateful, you know, to obviously be working with them, but I'm so thankful that they even thought to do this. Obviously it's Super Bowl 56 and on behalf of crown royal and myself, we actually gifted 56 of the most influential women in sports with crown royals, new whiskey blend. It's crown royal, 18 year old. And, uh, yeah, really excited to get it out. I helped them kind of make up the list of some of my favorite women and women that I look up to in the industry. It was a a lot of fun to do that and along with that they're actually gonna um donate a thousand dollars on behalf of each recipient to wise that's uh women in sports events and so i love that too because it empowers women in in sports and business that's very cool very awesome yeah. uh, indeed i mean you guys are, are part of oh, such a, an elite fraternity i know that's an ironic word to use um you know for, for women in sports but uh an elite sorority yeah. i guess uh of women in sports um uh -huh. and, you know i love i've look again looking at the broadcast teams and things like that um so very very cool stuff that crown is working on here um as mentioned mm -hmm. i cover the cowboys for sb nation so i would not I be doing it. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I'm I'm a little bit biased, uh, is you know really where I'm at here. Um, Charlotte Anderson is a great advocate for women in sports, obviously. I know you've you know worked with her. Baby. Uh yeah. well, you know, I kudos to her. Charlotte. Kudos to Charlotte. She's um obviously the the first lady, not the the first lady, but one of the first ladies of the cowboys. Uh give us a, a cool cowboy story. You're there. Oh yeah, yeah well I'll, I'll tell you one thing about Charlotte. I mean, she's a hustler, she is she is class. She has an unbelievable presence. Um, you know, I, one thing I love about Charlotte, obviously her last name is Jones, but that didn't, you know, she wasn't, she didn't take a back seat and be like, well, last name is Jones. This is easy for me. I mean, that woman works. She was also very instrumental in where by Aaron Andrews being, uh, having the Cowboys logo on it, which we are so grateful for the, to the Jones family for allowing us to be a part of Cowboys nation. Because I mean, you fans, you're a little rabid. You, you love your, your Cowboys and we're, we're grateful for that. And we love the lady fans that are wearing wear as well. So, uh, yeah, Charlotte is somebody that I definitely look up to in more ways than one. She is a, she's a pioneer. She is classy um, and she loves football and she does a great job selling it. And I appreciate every bit of her. That's awesome. Where by Aaron Andrews, um, I can speak not from personal experience, but my wife has many of your products, uh, as I was telling you, and, and she certainly enjoys them. Um, what's awesome. what's a, a great Cowboys game that you can remember? Like you, you do a lot of them, but what which one stands above? Hopefully a positive Cowboys memory, because unfortunately yeah, they were actually well. Yeah, there's a couple of, I mean, you know, there's the last minute Rogers heroics that I've, I've done Thanks, there. And, Appreciate it. Sorry. Awesome. But I will say two others that were not in Dallas that are very memorable. And it was Dak's first year. It was the game where Brett Favre's name was being put up at uh, Lambeau and they came in and spanked the Packers. And then we had such an exciting game um, actually in Pittsburgh, Dak and Z. In there the towels were going the white lint was in the air and i did the post game interview with both of those guys i have a great picture of me hugging dak uh it was just an exciting time so um yeah those are those are a couple of memories that stick out to me that's awesome the uh the green bay game that year dak's first interception a lot of people i don't know you know you're busy during the game but he shook brett Favre's hand at halftime because brett was getting honored as you mentioned and then immediately threw an interception so it's just kind of a funny little thing uh, <laughs> i don't remember that but yeah what is um you mentioned you know doing the post game interview with Dak? We've seen the post game interview for Super Bowls can be really hectic. Do you have a strategy? Yeah. Do, do you like you know? It's obviously, you've had a lot of games that come down to the wire, so I'm you know it's difficult to fully plan something. But what is your general plan? Like, are you sprinting? Are you running? Are you positioning yourself on a certain yard line? What what's your line of thinking in that moment? Can I be honest with you? Of course. The last if you're not, three we'll Super be upset. Bowls I've worked. I've had the losing side. 
that's and it so. sucks. It sucks because I this was my first. No, that's not true. This was my first NFC championship in a while that I hadn't had the losing side. So it was actually really exciting to do that. But um, yeah, I've had to interview all three coaches, uh, and that is by far the toughest job in sports to do because you you know this is like the worst loss of their career you feel gutted and horrible for them you don't even want to make eye contact you end up sounding sad because you want your voice to be lower my dad is always texting me before don't sound sad you know sound authoritative and i'm like but dad they just lost right well kyle shanahan you just blew it in the second half to the chief i mean come on what you can't do that you know so um i haven't had the opportunity to an experience i did the patriots falcons uh sideline and i thought i thought i was going to get the winner there and then tom brady comes back and leads one of the biggest comebacks in super bowl history and i got to look at matt ryan want to puke on the field so there you go you know but you did have like that's the greatest super bowl you had the first one to go to overtime you know you fox got the most airtime out of a super bowl than anybody ever has in a technical sense um i did oh, yeah. um i did ask joe buck once about super bowl 48 that you guys did in new york um that was not a that was my game. first super bowl no, so and not, I had the Broncos sideline. <laughs> well, and I, I asked him, I said, what do you do? And I know you all have different roles, but I said, what do you do? You know, you, you come out of halftime and you're trying to sell this, like, you know, come on, the Broncos are going to get back in this. And Percy Harvin just takes the kickoff right back and like completely yeah. squashes anything. Yeah, um, goes over Peyton's head. Yeah. Yeah. Um, rough times. But <sighs> you've, you've done some great games in great lo- you know, locations, New York, you know, yeah. Houston, uh, Miami. I mean, so good times, um, certainly uh, on Fox. Looking forward yeah. to next year's Cowboys going to be in it. You ready to guarantee that, Aaron, please? I don't I can't guarantee anything. I mean, I mm. kind of thought it was going to be Bucks and uh, Chiefs again. I thought maybe the Packers would be there. So, yeah, I was uh, I was shocked with not the uh, not shocked with the outcome, but kind of how the NFC ended up shaking up. But I think as we were in like week 15, week 16, we were like anybody, anybody could win this thing. This is all up for grabs. Mm. Well, um, hopefully, you know, hopefully you're on the winning sideline. Like we said, next year, you're interviewing Dak after the Super Bowl. Let's just will it into existence. <laughs> yeah. uh, Aaron Andrews, cool. where by Aaron Andrews, all the work you're doing with Crown Royal. Thank you so much for joining the SB Nation NFL show. Enjoy the rest of the week and enjoy the offseason. You've been working really hard. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate it.